a blessing to be with you this morning. We're going to start off with some of my friends and some people at our church sharing testimonies. So I'm going to invite up Justin to start us off. So Justin, you can come forward. He's going to share a quick testimony. Let's give a round of applause for Justin. Just make sure you stand here uh, facing the, the camera. So stay in this section. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so this is about to be hopefully a, a powerful two minutes, man. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to give it to you all fast. So um, our little background is I was involved in addiction. I was involved in a gang. Um, I was shot twice. I still have a bullet in my chest. Um, I was ran over by an 18-wheeler. Um, my whole right foot and leg was rebuilt. Um, I've been through a lot of stuff, overdoses after overdoses, hospitals after hospitals, prison three times. I've been through so much trauma in my life. But what I learned today is that the trauma was necessary to get me to the place that I am today. So God used my pain for his purpose, right? So it wasn't for nothing. But in those times when I was going through these situations, I thought my life was over. I thought that I wouldn't make it through it. But I'm here today to testify that Jesus Christ is real. And that, you know, God can get you through anything that you're going through. And I promise you, I, I, I never would understand God's grace if it wasn't for those trials that he put me through. He gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers, right? But I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves each and every one of us, that he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. And if he can change a sinner like me, he can change anybody. And I give God all the glory, right? So he said, before I, before I, knew, before I formed you, I knew you, right? He said he sanctified us before we were born. Right? He called us to be a prophet to the nations, not saying we're prophets, but he called us for his purpose, for his glory. And it's all about him. It's not about us. We put ourselves before him, and that's why a lot of things we go through, we struggle. Right? But if we just put God first, then our lives will be a lot easier than we make it. Man complicates things, but God has laid it out for us before we were born. He has the steps that we need to take if we trust in him each and every day, Amen. right? So I'm just here to give God the glory and testify what he's done in my life. That's a short piece of it. There's a lot more packed into Amen. it, but glory to God. Thank you. Josh, come forth. Praise the Lord. Amen. God over money, baby. Come on. Good morning, Coastal Christian Church. Uh, so just a few years back, um, I was a proud, selfish, uh, pro football hopeful. And I, I lived by the uh, mindset that in order to get what I wanted in life, I had to go get it. And one night when I was traveling home from uh, working out, um, I went and, and got w what I wanted. And what it was is a, a state trooper uh, came around behind me to pull me over, and I took off. And I didn't realize that I, I was just running from a state trooper at that point. Spiritually, I was running from God. I was arrested that night. And uh, in the cell, I cried out to God. And I was arrested for a second time that night. God arrested my heart. Praise the Lord for Hallelujah. that. Hallelujah. From, from, from that point forward, my life has transformed into a Matthew 633 life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So God gave me a home, and that home is now used as a place of ministry. So I, I turned from selfish to, to the only hood I represent now is servanthood. Amen. So, and God gets all the glory. Amen. Thank you, Josh. Love you, man. Shannon. Shannon Murphy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Josh is one of my closest friends, and it's just a blessing to know him. All right, Shannon, take it away. Hello. So um, some of you know my story because I actually shared it at my daughter Olivia's dedication. Um, the story is kind of a tribute as to why we named her middle name Charlotte. Uh, so this is a story about Charlotte's healing. Um, so a couple years ago, my sister-in-law and I, Nicole, 
um, we used to pray together every night. We would kneel and pray for those, specifically those who needed healing. We would do this together on the phone. And one night, Nicole had a dream where she said she saw that someone named Charlotte, uh, God was going to heal someone named Charlotte. And so we started to pray for Charlotte on our list. We didn't know anyone named Charlotte, but we believed, and we started to pray for Charlotte. <clears throat> Gets me emotional every time. So anyways, I go to Florida. Our friend of ours, Harvey, one of the elders of the church down there, he invited us to a prayer event where there would be worship and prayer specifically for the sick. I said, I'm down, I'm coming. So got on a plane, went down there, and I get there, and Harvey was praying over a woman who was sitting down in a chair, and he had his hands laid on her, and he stops. He stops mid-sentence, and I see him go, Shannon, where's Shannon? I need Shannon. And I, so I come over, he's like, uh, I just feel like the Lord wants you to pray. So I said, okay. So I lay my hands on Charlotte with him. We didn't know it was Charlotte. <laughs> in the middle of the prayer, we asked her name. She needed, uh, she needed healing for cancer and pain. And in the middle of the prayer, um, we asked her name, and she says Charlotte. And immediately, like, I just start just tearing up. I got so excited. I see, you're Charlotte. You're Charlotte. And she's looking at me kind of like I'm crazy. And um, I was like, God's going to heal you, Charlotte. Like, and so I waved to Nicole, and I'm, like, crying. I'm like, Nicole, come over here. This is Charlotte. Char uh, Nicole comes over, and she's crying. She's, oh, my gosh, it's Charlotte. So anyway, so we all lay hands on her. We pray for her. We just thought that was so cool. And then um, that night uh, when I went to sleep, I saw in a dream that the great physician had healed Charlotte, and uh, she will go to the doctor, and nothing will be, will be found. And I believed that. We just began to thank God when we prayed for Charlotte, and a while after I flew home, I got a text from Harvey, or a call from Harvey, and he had said, uh, Charlotte called the church. She was healed. She said she went to the doctor, and yeah. they found nothing. And Hallelujah. Charlotte was healed. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Shannon. Praise the Lord. Today, I want to talk to you about childlike faith. Jesus told us to have faith like a child. We see the testimonies of how God's worked this morning, and I want to, to share that to build your faith. Because I have a fear for myself and a fear for our church. And my fear is that we'll lose our childlike faith. We'll lose our wonder for God. Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, he took a child, he put them in their midst, and he said, unless you turn and become like this little child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. But whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I've had the opportunity to work with children recently, whether it's at Atlantic Christian School or on some mission trips and sometimes in Coastal Kids. And man, I love being around kids. How many of you guys like to be around kids? They're so awesome, right? Praise the Lord for kids. But you know what kids have that's so childlike? They have a trust in what you tell them. Like when you tell them something, they have an easy time believing. And not only that, children also, they have a wonder about life. Right? They're amazed. They're curious. And so I want to invite a child up. Ariana, if you could come forth. Um, that would be awesome. So everyone give a round of applause for Ariana. <laughs> wow, she's a princess. Hi, Ariana. How are you? Good. What's your favorite color? Pink. Pink. <laughs> All right. Ariana, what's your favorite thing about God? Um, that he's Jewish and he's Christian like me. Oh, yeah, he's Jewish and Christian. What's your favorite story in the Bible? Daniel and the lion's den. Wow. You like that story. What do you like about it? Um... That the lions didn't eat Daniel. Amen. All right, you can sit down. Great job. Thank you. The lions didn't eat Daniel. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? It's precious, right? Remember when we had faith like that? Remember when we first came to Christ and everything was amazing? 
I remember in kids' ministry when I grew up, we used to sing this song, and the song went like this, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. And I remember singing that. And I remember like leaving kids' ministry, learning the stories, and I would walk out and I would say, man, God can do anything with my chest held high. I would be ready to fight the devil himself, right? I had this faith in God. I remember one time, um, I remember looking at this bird, and uh, we were on a field trip, and there was this bird there, and I remember staring at this bird for like five minutes. I was like, Lord, I believe you can make this bird like fly right to me. And I was in a staring contest with this bird for five minutes. I'm praying, I'm believing, and the bird ended up flying away. <laughs> but I remember, I just think of God in heaven. He was just smiling down on me because I had this childlike faith. But then we lose it, right? We experience the real world. We experience letdown, disappointments, heartbreaks, unanswered prayers. And all the while, our heart, over time, it gets a little bit harder. It's a little bit harder to believe the excitement, it's faded away, and that faith is just for kids, it's not for adults. We, we know how life works. But the thing is, Jesus said to adults that you need to humble yourself and become like a little child. You're never past childlike faith. I want to tell you one story about childlike faith in the Bible. I'm going to cut it short, and we're going to have a time to actually step out in faith today. Let me give you a little history lesson before we get into it. So God had a plan for Israel since the beginning of time. You see, God promised in Genesis chapter 12 that he was going to give the Israelites a promised land, a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. And God promised that he was going to do it. And remember, the Israelites were oppressed by Pharaoh. They were enslaved, and it didn't look like it was possible, so that God raised up Moses, a deliverer. From his birth, he was set apart, miraculously saved, and he became uh, the one to lead the Israelites out. God appeared to him in a burning bush, and God said to Moses, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So Pharaoh does. Pharaoh says no. God sends plagues, hail, um, the water turns to blood, frogs everywhere, locusts, gnats, the, sc- the sky turns dark, and finally we know the firstborn son dies, right? And the firstborn son dies, and finally God demonstrates all this power and lets the people go, and they get to the Red Sea. It's 2.4 million Israelites. That's what most commentaries say. They get to the sea. Pharaoh decides to send his armies to go recapture them. They get to the sea, God says to Moses, stretch forth your staff, and the Red Sea <laughs> parts in half. I mean, imagine walking to Ocean City and seeing the ocean, it's just boom, it passed. 2.4 million Israelites pass through on dry ground, and God destroys the Egyptians. Not only that, he feeds them with manna, he feeds them with quail, there's a pillar of fire by night, a cloud by day, water comes from a rock, and it's at this point where we pick up in the Bible, because God's ready to take them into the promised land. He's ready to bring them into the land he already promised. And so what God does is he says, I want you to have the heads of your tribes. Twelve spies go to the land for 40 days and bring a report of what you see. The reason God wanted them to bring a report was so that the people of Israel would get excited about the land that God promised, flowing with milk and honey. And so he sends them out. And here's where we pick up in Numbers Chapter 14. I'm not going to read it because it's a long portion, but I'm going to summarize it. So at the end of the 40 days, verse 25, they returned out from spying the land, these 12 spies. And so they come back and they said, This land is a land that flows with milk and honey. However, the cities are fortified, and the people there are so great in number and so great in size. And all the people began to doubt. But then Caleb stood up. He had childlike faith. And he stood up and he quieted the people and he said, we can overcome it. God will give us the land. Let us step in and possess it. This is a promise from God. But then the people, they said, no, the Canaanites, they're stronger than us. The land devours everyone and there's giants. They're huge. 
Everyone then in chapter 14 begins to cry and weep. It's at that moment where they start to say, we should have died back in Egypt. Why did you bring us out here to die? We should just go back. We should just go back to Egypt. But then Joshua stands up. And Joshua says, this is a good land. God will give it. Do not fear. And when Joshua stood up, the people of Israel, they wanted to stone him for his faith. They wanted to stone him, but God protected him. And do you know what God did? He stepped in and he said, you know what? These people, I've put up with them too long. They've seen my signs. They've seen my wonders and they're still complaining. And God ended up, do you know what he did? He killed off everyone over the age of 20 and they couldn't enter the land because of unbelief. So only 20... Stand up if you're 20 or under right here. Stand up to your feet. If you're 20 or under, come on. These are the only people that would have been able to enter. All right, you guys can sit down. All of you guys would have died if you were back in Israel. That's crazy. And you see, God didn't allow them to enter into the fullness of the promised land because they didn't believe him. And that's what I want to talk to you today about is childlike faith versus unbelief. So there's three points. It's going to make it quick. Um, but you see the difference between Joshua and Caleb versus the other 10 spies. Let me ask you a question. Can any of you name one of the other 10 spies besides Joshua and Caleb? Anyone? No. Because no one remembers them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't even know them. I don't know the names. Because no one's going to remember you, and you're not going to leave a legacy for God if you complain, and if you don't believe. The people that are remembered, the people that make an impact, the people that God uses are the people that believe. So there's three things I want to say is that childlike faith looks forward. Everyone look at your neighbor and say, look forward. Tell your neighbor to look forward. So childlike faith looks forward while unbelief looks backwards. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul tells us, he says, forget the things that lie behind Forget the things behind and reach forth for what's ahead and press on towards the calling of Christ. Press on towards the future. You see, we need to be looking forward. Think about horses. When horses run, they have the blinders on so they don't look to the side. They keep their focus on what the goal is, what the future is. And runners, they tell you, don't look while you're running to the right or to the left or you'll slow down. You see, God wants us to have a mindset that's looking forward to what he can do. Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up into the land and possess it. Unbelief looks backwards. They said, it would be better to go back to Egypt. And maybe right now you feel like you're stuck in your faith. You're stuck in a sin. You're stuck in a habit. You're stuck in a situation. You're stuck in a relationship. And you feel like there's no way out. I want to tell you, that God can bring you out, that God can do amazing things. Next thing, childlike faith considers the supernatural while unbelief considers only the natural. Joshua and Caleb, they stood up and said, the Lord is with us, do not fear them, while the other 10 spies said, we're not able to go up because they're stronger than we. They had a faith that God with us is greater than, than the battle before us. And that's the same thing that David had. Remember the story of David and Goliath? He stood up, everyone else is afraid of this giant, but he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who defies the armies of the living God? And he defeated the giant because he believed, and he said, God is with me. The Lord, the battle is the Lord's. And so in your circumstances, in your situations, are you only considering the natural, or are you taking into account a God who can move mountains, a God who can do anything? A God, amen. He is powerful, he is mighty. Isaiah chapter 40, look at this. It says this, in Isaiah chapter 40. Oh, I'm not in Isaiah 40. <laughs> All right, here we go, Isaiah chapter 40. It says this, it says, look, 
Who stretches out the, the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in? He makes princes nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Have you not heard? It is he who sits upon the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. God says he's so powerful. Inhabitants, people are like grasshoppers before him. Another scripture says the nations are just a drop in a bucket. They're nothing before the power of God. Amen. Do we see the power of God in his word? Childlike faith believes for a solution while unbelief complains about the problem. Ooh, I heard some oohs and ahs. That one hit, right? That hit me. Because I complain. I still struggle. I'm not perfect. I'm speaking about faith, but God's teaching me that I need to grow in my faith. That Joshua and Caleb said, he will bring us into the land and give it to us. But the other 10 spies said, we will fall by the sword. Why did you bring us out here to die? They complained. Let me ask you, are you a complainer or a believer? Do all things without grumbling and complaining, Philippians 2 says. You see, faith is so, 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 so important. We're saved by faith. The reason all of us were born again is we believed that Jesus died on the cross. We couldn't see him. We never saw Jesus, but we believed that what the word of God said is true. We believed his truth. Faith is something all of you exercise today. Everyone look at this chair. How many of you, when you came in to church today, you saw this chair and you checked it out before you sat on it? You sat on it maybe like skittishly and then you said, maybe it works, and then you sat. No, every single one of you, you saw this chair and you sat on it confidently. Why? Here's why. Because you've been sitting in chairs your whole life and they mostly don't break. You could probably count on your hand the amount of times you sat on a chair and it broke. Unless you have bad luck or something. Well, I don't believe in luck. Uh, God's in control. But unless, you know, you have bad situations happen. But the consistency of you sitting on chairs causes you to simply confidently sit on a chair. In the same way, the consistency of seeing God move in our lives, of seeing what the word of God says, should cause us to confidently rest in his promises. Confidently, confidence is built. Amen. Confidence is built by consistency. Say it with me. Confidence is built by consistency. I've seen God in my life. I've seen God work in your lives in this church, and that builds a confidence that if God did it before, he can do it again because my God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and his promises are true, and he is I am the Alpha and Omega. He never changes, and so I know my God can come through for me. My God is faithful. He's real. I want to talk about the promised land for a moment. What does that represent? The promised land was the land that was promised to the Israelites, but they couldn't enter it. In Hebrews chapter 4, it tells us that this story of Joshua and Caleb and unbelief is actually for the believer today. It's not just some story. Hebrews 4 says it's for us. Let me read Hebrews 4. It says, Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any should have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter into that rest. Amen. So what it's saying here is this promise of rest, it's still here. Today, we can still enter into faith in Christ. And so, although we're saved by faith, faith is not a one-time thing. That's so important to understand. We need faith every day. We need to continue. The word for faith, when the Bible talks about it, it's a believing and continuing to believe. And can I be honest? I know in my heart that some of us right now, our faith tank is on empty or maybe just a little bit of gas left. We're losing faith. Our faith is weak. Our faith is low. But God can work with that. God can work with little faith. Unbelief 
will stop us from entering into the promises that God has for us. The promised land ultimately represents Jesus himself. Jesus said, come to me and I'll give you rest. Jesus and salvation and a deep intimacy with him is what the promised land is all about. Jesus becomes our promised land. And if we want to enter into the fullness of what God has for us, through what he accomplished on the cross, we've got to come to him by faith. In fact, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I want to give you three points for how to build your faith. And I'm going to close and give you an opportunity to respond by faith. So three points, how to build your faith practically. So we have some um, practical application here to carry with us. Number one, faith is built by Christian fellowship. The more we're in fellowship, the greater our faith can grow. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron, and so one man sharpens another. The Bible says, I want you to exhort each other, which means encourage and challenge each other daily so that you're not hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. The second way to build your faith is you've got to be in the word of God. Faith is not some magical, mystical thing. It's built on this book. When I'm in this book and I lean in his book and I read this, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's a daily devotion to his word that builds our faith because it shows us who God is. Number three, this is the one I really want to emphasize and I want to challenge you with this this morning. To really grow your faith, you have to confront your doubts. You have to confront them. You see, there's a story in the Bible where there's this man and he asked Jesus to heal his son. And he said, Lord, if you can, you can heal me. And Jesus said, if you can, all things are possible to the one who believes. And the man responded and said, I believe, help my unbelief. See, he said, I believe, I, I know, you're Jesus, you've done it before, you can do it again, I believe, but then he said, help my unbelief. So I wanna talk to you about unbelief because each of us has unbelief in our lives in small ways. I have unbelief, and I know that maybe you have unbelief. We all have different unbelief with different things. Some of us, we have a hard time believing that God loves us. We read this book, it says it, but when it comes to like actually trusting that God loves us, we still feel like we have to earn it. We still feel like we're unworthy. We still feel like we're not really accepted by God. And that's a lie, my brothers and sisters, that's a lie. Some of us have unbelief that God's gonna provide for us. God says he provides for the birds. How much more will he clothe you? And then he says, you have little faith. Some of us doubt that God will provide. Some of us doubt that God can save you. Maybe you're here today and you haven't accepted Jesus, but you doubt that you're worthy to be saved. And you doubt that you can actually surrender your life to God and that he has a plan for you. Some of you might doubt the Lord that he can heal. You see, God can do it. He can heal. He can do miracles. Some of us doubt that God is good. We've been through so many hard things, so many letdowns, that when we think about God, good is not the first word that comes to mind. We think that God has forgotten us, but God is good. Some of us doubt that God's in control. Some of us doubt that we can be delivered from an addiction, delivered from a sin, but did you hear the testimony of my brother Justin? All things are possible. Some of us doubt that we could ever have a strong faith. We could ever believe. But I want you guys, each one of you has a bag, a little bag. Can you guys pull that bag out? Inside of each one of your bags, I put a mustard seed in there. And Linda, if you could put up that picture of a mustard seed. So a mustard seed is that small. See if you can find the mustard seed in your bag. There's one in there. Don't take it out. Just look at it. And then you go to the next picture. So that's what mustard seed looks like, all right? And then you can go to the next picture. That's what a mustard tree looks like. Look how big that is. Look how small of a seed this is, but look how big 
it can grow to. And the Bible says, Jesus says in Matthew 17, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thrown into the sea, and it will obey you, for nothing is impossible with God. And I'm here to tell you today, coastal Christian, that nothing is impossible with God, that he can do far more abundantly than anything we ask or think. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to become like a child again. Some of us have lost our childlike faith, and it's time to come back. But the way that that's going to happen is you need to confront your doubts. You need to be honest with God. He works through honesty. And so in your bag, there's a little card. And on that card, there's a crown, crayon. My grandma said, say crayon, not crown. <laughs> so I got to obey my grandma, crayon. And if you could put on the worship pad, or dad, if you want to strum some kind of noise, music, <laughs> create the moment, right? It's a big moment. <laughs> so I want you to write down, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, what area am I doubting? I want you to have an honest moment with God. Now write at least one thing. Maybe you're doubting a circumstance could go the way you are praying for. I want you to write that down. Take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit, where are you doubting? I did this when I was at a youth camp. There was a retreat speaker. And he said, I want you to write down your doubts and take them before God. And I never did that before. And I was, in a youth, I was in a youth group and I wrote that down. And my list was full. I had 20 doubts. I'm just asking you to write a few. And you know what? The first time I wrote down those doubts, it opened my eyes. Wow, I have a lot more doubt than I thought. But the good news of the gospel is that Jesus came for sinners. He didn't come for the righteous. He didn't come for those who believe fully. He came for those with mustard seed faith. He can work with that. So write down your doubt. Write that down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, bring things to our mind right now. Areas we're doubting, areas we're weak, areas we need a mustard seed of faith. Write that down before the Lord. Just like Hezekiah put the paper before the Lord. The letter before the Lord. Spread that doubt before the Lord right now in your heart. Whatever it is for you. And then I want you to write down that doubt. And I want you to remember the crown, crayon, <laughs> represents childlike faith. That your childlike faith right now, you're believing that God can work with you in the midst of that doubt. And you're believing that there's a mustard seed. My tank is almost empty. It's a small faith. But God, I'm giving you my small faith. So I'm going to invite the prayer team to come forward. Um, Cindy and Sam, if you could come up as well, that would be great. And they're going to stand here. And I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith right now. You see, this message is nothing if it's not united with faith. So right now, if you're here, Jesus' name, and you need to trust God again in some area of your life, and you're here, and you're bold enough to come forward, I want to pray for you, and I want you to come forward. Maybe it's a sickness. Here's the thing with sickness. If God doesn't heal, we still worship him. The Bible says that God is able to deliver us from this fiery furnace, but even if he doesn't, we still worship him. But we're just going to believe we're just going to ask God to just demonstrate his power. Whether we see it or not, we're going to come with our mustard seed together as a church, whether it's a circumstance, whether it's a doubt, whatever it is, come forward at this moment. I left some space. I ended the message early so we could do this. If you're here today and you need prayer, come to someone and come to me. I will pray for you as well. We're going to experience the Lord together. So at this moment, Holy Spirit, bring people who need to confront their doubts. Bring people who need a touch from you. Don't be afraid. Today is your day. God can break through if you come to him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Maria, thank you for your precious daughter, Lord. Guys, keep coming. Don't be afraid. Bring your doubt to the Lord. Bring your doubt to Jesus.
And I want you guys to pray with me for Chase. Chase said, I don't know if I'm worthy. This child, Chase, is worthy of your love. I want you to extend your hands to Chase. We're going to pray for Chase. Father, I thank you for Chase, Lord. I thank you for your precious son. He is worthy. He is chosen in the beloved. You died for him. You live in him. And he is your son, Lord. I pray that he would experience the fullness of your love right now. That he would rest in your grace because you love him so much. Jesus, give him breakthrough and experience of your love. We trust you, Lord. I thank you for Chase. Lord, you died for him. In Jesus' name. Come forward, keep going. We have a few more minutes. Don't miss this opportunity. We're gonna, I mean, who wouldn't want the whole church to pray over you? Mike, how can I pray for you? Mike said, am I really forgiven? Are you really real? Father, we pray for Mike, Lord, that you would let him know that you are real. You're as real as I am standing here before him. Lord, you are real. And we pray for Mike that you would reveal yourself to him. No one comes to you unless you draw them. And I pray that Mike would experience you're real, Lord. You love him. You've chosen him, Lord, to be saved. There's a reason that he met my dad at Summer's Point Fitness. There's a reason that all these things happen. And there's a reason that he's here today. Lord, you are real. And you're telling him that you love him. And just to give it all up. Mike, are you ready to give it all up to Jesus? Yes, he's ready. Thank you, Father, for Mike. In Jesus' name, be free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, Mike. Anyone else? Come forth like a mustard seed. In Jesus' name. Tim. And we rejoice that Tim and Carolyn here are recently engaged, Lord. And we pray that you would provide for their wedding, Lord. You would provide all the needs, Lord. And I just feel led to say right now, guys, church, if you could donate to them, if, if the Lord puts any amount of money to give to these guys so they could just, God, you would provide their wedding, Lord. We're just going to take a step of faith. And if the Lord leads you to, um, donate to their wedding so that they can go to the venue that you have for them, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, for the fellowship. Lord, they love you. God, provide for them the right connections, Lord. You love them both so much. You've chosen them. Tim's on fire for you. He's always talking about you. And increase his faith in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Bless those two. Amen. Love you, Tim. God bless you, bro. Love you, Carolyn. I'm proud of you. Amen. A few more minutes, guys. Come forward. Receive prayer. You can come to me. You can come to anyone else. doubt I'm not worthy enough to get into heaven because I know the sins I know are wrong but I keep doing them anyway I have bad habits that I need to break you have one as well Same thing. oh it's both of them okay I doubt that I'm good enough to to be keep to for God to keep forgiving me I keep messing up what's your names Sadie and Brooke father we just pray for Sadie and Brooke Lord both of them said I doubt that I'm enough Jesus, your blood says that we are enough, Lord. And I just thank you for Brooke and Sadie, Lord, that you are saying to your daughters, Lord, that they are enough, that they are chosen by you, Lord, from the foundations of the earth, Lord, and you bought them with a high price, and they are enough. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that they would experience your love like never before, that they would surrender their lives to you. Lord, they're saying, I believe. I believe God's good, but help my unbelief. Help them to believe you're real. Lord, there's no way you're not you brought them here. Only you would draw them to come up here. And I pray for these two precious daughters in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Don't miss this out. Come forward for prayer. Judy. <clears throat> My eye is healed permanently. This surgery, I have faith that all will be made well. Everyone extend your hands to Judy. We're going to pray and ask God to heal her eye. 
and ask for the surgery to go well. Father, we just pray for Judy, Lord. I pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that all of us together, our mustard seed together, Lord, you would heal her eye, Lord. Her eyes would be opened. Jesus, you said in the Gospels, be opened and ears were opened. Lord, see, Lord. And I pray that Judy would have eyes that open, that see clearly, Lord. I pray it in faith, expecting you to come through. Lord, let the surgery, let her come back with a testimony. Lord, Judy loves you so much. She's leading people to Christ with her Bible studies. So bless her, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She said, I know it's going to be good. One more. One more. Is there one more? Whatever your doubt is, whatever your need is, bring it before the altar. Kim. Good morning. Holy Spirit, I'm praying. For a companion, I need to feel love. Father, we thank you for Kim, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are her eternal companion, that she is not alone. She has not been forsaken. Lord, you said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, that you would allow her to feel your love from the Father. She would rest in you and that one day, Lord, you would provide, even soon, Lord, you would provide a companion for her, a helper, just like you did in Genesis. You provided for Adam and Eve together, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, Lord. Allow Kim to have someone to walk with her through these trials. In Jesus' name, we believe for it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, as we close this time, we enter into worship. You're moving. You're healing. I just want to pray right now. If you're here and you just have not been able to sleep, I just, I, I kept feeling that earlier. Raise your hand if you have uh, insomnia or sleep issues. I want to pray for you. Father, we just pray for those with insomnia, Lord, that they would have peaceful sleep, Lord, for healing and your power to heal, Lord. You would stretch forth your hand and you would heal. Lord, let this day be a, a memory, Lord, that, God, you came down and you, you helped us to sleep well because our faith in your promise, Lord. We trust you for the outcome no matter what, but, Lord, we do believe for peaceful sleep for everyone in Jesus' name. And Father, we just pray for those who are doubting you in any way, that we would take our doubts to you and that we would know that just a mustard seed can move a mountain. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross and opening up access to receive things from you. Love you guys. In Jesus' name, amen.